Woo! Now there's a lot of cherry tomatoes right here. Ooh, I gotta get me some. Yes, I do. Mm-mm-mm. Oh yeah. Those are full of flavor. They just burst in your mouth. I could eat them all right here. <laughs> well, hello, friends and family. Excuse me while I chew. Mmm. Woo! You caught me. Yep. Popping some cherry tomatoes in my mouth over here on the south side driveway bed. But since you walked up and snuck by Spooky and Cleo, which are probably asleep, or maybe you gave them some treats, hey, we can take a little walk about, show you what we still got going on, and give you a little update about me, if you would like. So come along. So yeah, we're over here at the south side driveway garden bed, and you can see here, lots of nice ripening, nice and red, some are orange, cherry tomatoes all along this wall. Yep, seems like we got plenty there, don't we? In fact, I'm going to have to come pick some of these off whenever I, you all leave. So I can have a salad, either tonight or tomorrow. But we still got three collard plants still surviving, starting to perk up. And if you thought that collards will all bolt in the heat of the summer, well, these three didn't. They came through the whole summer long. Yes, they did. They didn't fare all that well during the heat, but they survived. And now, the leaves are starting to grow more, and they're starting to perk up, and they'll go all through our winter time here in the deep south. Came out, oh, two weeks ago, stuck some ends from some green onions right here in this bed. Some died, some did not. I think we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten survivors out of 15, but hey, they were just the ends that most people throw away. You know, you can do that. Just cut you off about a quarter inch to a half inch of the end of a green onion, stick it in the ground, water it in, give it a little bit of love and fertilizer, and it'll keep on growing. If you want to, you can just snip off the green, and it'll grow throughout the first year into the second, or most likely, it'll try to bloom. Because onions are biennials too, just like the collards are. But are better boy tomatoes? Yeah, we got them through the summer. And they've got some tomatoes on them. Some nice ones right there. Ooh, three more right there. So we got five on that plant. And you can see right here, there's another four. And a fifth one over there, just starting to ripen up. So we will get some tomatoes this year. It's been a long haul for these plants. Oh, we missed the sixth one. Way down there. But I'm just happy to see that we got them through the summer. We got a few things, not a lot, but we're still getting it here on October the 9th, 2024. And the fall flowers are starting to bloom. Right here, some I've showed you many times. And there's Mr. Bumble working on the blooms. I think we disturbed him. But this is what they call tall Arboretum. Yep, it grows wild here. Probably courtesy of the birds, if I had to know. You know, my feathered friends. And this is some of the last food that our bees and butterflies will get this year before the wintertime winds blow and it all goes away. Well, will it snow? We'll have to just wait and see. The blueberries are all finished up. For the year as are many things around here yeah spooky good to see you yeah how you doing you want to say hi to the, your friends and family hmm do you you want to walk about with papa today we're not going to do much okay yeah that's my big buddy Ooh, there's some more of that 
tall arboretum. Well, it won't be there come tomorrow. Will it, Spooky? The mower will just chop it all down. But we've enjoyed it for a week or two before probably the final mowing of the year. And like always, we got sticks to pick up. It's a never ending process. And Spooky, he's just running around my feet. And you might see that nice bright yellow up there. Well, that's goldenrod. And I've seen a lot of bees on it and butterflies too. Ooh, we got a lot of that tall arboretum growing in the lawn this year, Spooky. Yes, we do. Comes back every year. Ooh, look at it there all along the fence line. That's simply stunning. Don't y'all think? And I really do appreciate all of this fall flowers. Some are rather dainty, like these small white and yellow daisy-like flowers. And there's another little bumble working every bloom in there. I don't know if you caught him. He's rather small. Did you catch him, Spooky? You did? You saw him? You did? Get on up there. There you go. Take the high ground. Yeah, you're looking fine. Ooh, there's a big bumble. It just flew off. Oh, there's several. There's a wasp, a bumble. Working these blossoms and blooms. Well, a blossom blooms, but a bloom's not a blossom. Look at that hungry bumble going at it. Packing in the pollen. Storing it for the winter. Hey, there's a little honeybee. Right there. You see that little honeybee? Hello, my friend. So good to see you this year. So I am glad I let some of this grow up from time to time throughout the year. And here on the old tire beds, yeah, look at that collar. That's the only single survivor I have from the spring. It's looking pretty majestic now. Look at how big. Those leaves are. They're larger than my hand. And it's got a secondary shoot, as Spooky most adamantly points out, right down here. It's not a, another plant. It's actually coming off. This plant, too. Well, that'll give us a few greens, won't it, Spooky? And then we have our pepper plants. And they're loaded up. Plenty of those Red lunchbox peppers everywhere on every limb. And Spooky's trying to get my attention to show me. And of course, we have plenty of banana peppers hanging around. Three there, two there, a couple more there. Some more over yonder, more blossoms coming on. And we got one right in there, Spooky, that we need to pick. Woo! And look at all these. Spooky, get down from there. <laughs> yeah, look at this one. That nice bell pepper. Here's one starting to ripen up, as this one is too. Woo, we got another one ripening up. And a little one there too. So what, on that one plant, Spooky, there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six? That's not bad. And then over here, we got so many more. Look down in there. There's a cluster of three. There's some more up here. Nice big one down there. There's another small one. Over here we got another small one. Three more right there. Plenty of peppers for one little old man. <laughs> Show it some love, Spooky. Yep. Spooky, he takes care of them. Watches over them faithfully. Right, my big buddy? Where's your mama, Cleo? Is she over snoozing at her other house? 
I bet she is. Cause the kids got just got home. <laughs> My big love buddy. Yes, you are. So yeah, we've got a lot of that tall arboretum up here. A lot of more of the goldenrod. And plenty of butterflies of all shapes and sizes have been coming through on their trip back south. Look at all this goldenrod. And if we're careful, we can see a wasp dining right there behind that one too. You see him back there? He's getting his evening meal. Let's go up and check what we got left. Up at the clothesline, planting pole. Now about all we got up here is three scraggly pepper plants. We got this one lunch box right here loaded up with peppers as you can see they're just everywhere and we do got a bell here that's forming up some more there's three right there so yeah even up here we've got more peppers coming on and some of these lunch box are quite large let's see if I can find one of the bigger ones. Look at that one right there. That's a fine example. It's nearly three inches long. And down here on our final pepper plant, let's see. Look at the size of that green bell. And it's got another one right down there. So now that's about all we got going on. It's not much, but we got it through all summer long. And with everything that's been going on in my life, I think that was quite a peak. Let me know what you think in the comments below the video. Ooh, look at there, Spooky. There's three more green bells. Oh, my. Well, at least we'll be getting plenty of vitamin C. Because you might not know it. Bell peppers. Have quite a lot of vitamin C. So yeah, that's about it for our gardening this year. I had thought about getting more collars and putting them in, but I just don't know. We've got so much else we need to do. The fig tree has dropped most of its leaves. It's finishing up the year. It looks rather bare right now, but it'll be fine. And it'll come out next year. I gotta do some pruning this winter too. But hey, let's sit down a minute on the front porch and chat a while. And I'll let you know how I've been doing and what's going on in the reality of my life. Well, Spooky, are you all tuckered out too from our walkabout? Well, you were with Papa too while we were watering, weren't you, my big buddy? Well, take a break. Okay, scratch a little. No? Now you're going to clean up? Okay. <laughs> My big bud. He was with me all the way. You'll be okay, Spooky. We'll be just fine. Oh, there you are again, friend and family. Now, as you can see, we're on the front porch. I'm glad you could come along for a little walkabout and let me show you what we still have growing on. And maybe in the comments below the video, you'll tell me what you've got left if any at all, and how well it's doing. I sure would like to know. But yeah, as you can see here, it's a bright, sunny day this afternoon. And we do got a little bit of breeze and wind, not much to speak of. And for those of you who are worried that Milton's coming our way, well, we're a long, long way from Milton today. And we're thankful for that. But we hope and we pray that those are in the path have went ahead and evacuated and heeded the warnings though I've just looked again at the updates 
And Milton, as we all know, was a monster of a five. It weakened to a four. Then it weakened midday today to a three. And now it looks like it may come onshore as a mid-range three at 120 mile per hour sustained winds. But that still can be terrifying and create a lot of damage. Not to mention the storm surge that they say can be from anywhere from nine to 10 feet up to 15 feet in some areas. And we can all see what water does in Florida and in the Carolinas and other places too. So yeah, we're gonna be fine. We're not even forecasted for any rain whatsoever, even though we could use a little bit of rain here. And as for wind, you can see what we got going on. We're expected to see 10 to 20 miles per hour at best. And that's just a breezy day in the deep south. But yeah, as far as me, you know, this is now one day in two weeks since my last ultra high dose radiation treatment for my prostate cancer was done. And the first week was pretty tough as far as my bladder goes and my tiredness and fatigue. This week, slowly, it's gotten a little better. My bladder's still irritated, I won't lie. What's that mean? You get that burning and urgency. And it seems like every drink you take, you got to go pee. But that too, in all truth, will get better as time goes by. But I said after I took the fifth one, rather than press myself, I just heal up. So the first week, I didn't do much, except what I absolutely had to. This week, I've been trying to do just a little bit more. You see, in reality, there's nothing that can't wait a few days more. Now tomorrow, even though I've kept putting it off and putting it off, I'm going to get out here and get part of this yard mode. I've been meaning to every day this week. But in reality, I just didn't have the giddy up and go. So tomorrow, we're hoping to get up, fix some fine breakfast. Maybe I'll take all of you along. Because that's something I wanted to talk about with you. Just what you do for breakfast. Every day. Wherever you are. So yeah, it's a fine day in my neighborhood. And let's take a moment, or many moments, throughout the remainder of today, tonight, and in the coming days too. Please don't forget those in the other states that just went through Helene. And now those that are facing the torrent of Milton. Because theirs is yet to come. I do hope and pray no one loses their life and property damage is minimized. But I've learned over my years that stuff is just garbage at some point in time. And that's true. Stuff is just stuff. It only holds value if we want it to. So yeah, that's all we got to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this little video this episode of Mr. Tom's Neighborhood. And like I said, I think the next one we'll be sharing with you is what's up for breakfast here in my little old country kitchen in the deep south of Alabama. Until I, the kitty crew, you know them all. You know my big bud, Spooky. Cleo, which you might have heard, showed up and was scratching at my feet. The princess of the house, Gracie, inside. And of course, we've got old Heathcliff coming more often and fluffy muffin dusty too As, and we even got another surprise visitor i'll have to set out the camera and show you and of course we got the possum game that comes in the darkness of the night see you on that next video and episode of mr tom's neighborhood y'all take care out there stay safe and may god bless you Did you bless those in your life goodbye for now cleo don't go after the birdies. Cleo? Cleo, you gonna come over here and see Papa? No, nope, you gonna snub me? Well, I'll go in and get you some treats. Since you decide to show up. Okay? You gonna come see Papa?
Cleo, Cleo. Yeah, we all know Cleo. She does exactly what Cleo wants. Don't you, Cleo? Come on, I'll get you some treats. But we gotta put our friends and family up. For now, a little later all. <laughs>